I'm sure many of you have already heard about the orcas attacking boats in the waters of the Iberian Peninsula. It made many headlines and was widespread over the internet back in 2020 when the first reports of the attacks began. Four years have passed, and while these attacks don't seem to come up as frequently in the news, they are still happening, and they have been happening fairly regularly for the past four years. In fact, I was quite surprised to find out just how many attacks had occurred. In the past four years, there have been about six to seven hundred reported incidents with the behavior speculated to be spreading through different pods. While the first reports seem to be mostly located around the Strait of Gibraltar, later incidents spread further north, past the coast of Portugal and off the coast of Galicia towards the north of Spain. One incident even occurred in the North Sea in 2023, suggesting maybe more pods of orcas were learning the behavior. After multiple years with hundreds of incidents and numerous vessels sunk, a question that keeps coming up is, why? There have been two main theories that have come up in the past few years, and it's something we've discussed on the podcast. But recently, in 2024, a third theory has emerged, along with a research paper that might give further insight as to why the orcas in these areas are attacking boats. Now, orcas have a pretty wide range all over the world. Of course, there are different kinds with multiple subspecies, or maybe even different species entirely, and a variety of different pods within those groups. But they aren't exactly common around the Mediterranean. In fact, a paper published back in 2016 titled Conservation Status of Killer Whales in the Strait of Gibraltar states that killer whales in the Mediterranean Sea are currently restricted to the strait and its surrounding waters. A survey done in 2011 found there were 39 individual orcas divided into five separate pods. Not many, and they were declared endangered by the Spanish National Catalogue of Endangered Species, and they were listed as critically endangered by the IUCN in 2019. Now you might wonder why the orcas are even in these waters in the first place, but the answer seems to be food. Specifically, the large Atlantic bluefin tuna which all pods had been observed hunting. Well, not just actively hunting. Of course, orcas are a highly intelligent animal, and some pods, two out of the five actually, were observed taking tuna from dropline fisheries, which apparently gave them access to larger tuna than the pods that were actively hunting the fish. Well, while larger tuna is more food, getting involved with people might not be a good idea, as some of the threats to these vulnerable populations are vessel traffic and contamination, among other things. Now, this information will be highly relevant and important to us when we start discussing the reasoning behind some of these attacks, if we want to call them attacks. Speaking of, not all of the orcas in the area are implicated in attacks. And in fact, it seems to have all started with maybe just one female orca in the summer of 2020. An orca that has since been named White Gladys. The name Gladys comes from an older scientific name for orca, which was apparently Orcanus gladiator, meaning whale fighter in Latin. She began the odd interactions with boats in the summer of 2020, when she was likely pregnant, and she continued to interact in 2021, after she had given birth to her calf, which seemed to puzzle some of the marine biologists in the area, because mother orcas are usually incredibly protective of their calves, but white gladys, led her calf towards boats, which isn't exactly a safe place for a newborn. As the marine biologist Monica Gonzalez stated, she went to the boats with this calf, so she preferred to stop the boats rather than keeping her baby safe. Risky stuff. Regardless, White Gladys may have been the first, but she certainly wasn't the last. Over time, other individuals were identified. The child of White Gladys, Gladys Falabres, and her sisters named Gladys Dahlia and Gladys Clara. There were a few others in this pod, and another pod, 
And maybe you've already noticed the pattern, but basically any individual identified in one of these incidents receives the name Gladys, regardless of which pod they're in. So any orca in the area with the name Gladys attached to it has been involved in an incident attack to some extent. A few Gladyses seem to more hang close by and observe the attack without actually physically attacking the boats. To date, about 15 individuals have been identified as part of the Gladys gang. It seems they mostly target sailing boats and particularly they like to go for the rudder. According to an article in Marine Mammal Science in 2022, the interactions usually take place during daylight hours, generally around noon. Curiously, the article also noted that the orcas seem to ramp up the attacks if the crew attempted to speed up or steer away from them. However, in some cases, when the crew slowed or even came to a stop, the orcas stopped attacking. As I stated, the incidents have risen to the hundreds, perhaps somewhere between six to seven hundred at this point, but in most cases the boats aren't seriously damaged, and I've only read of about a handful of vessels that were damaged so badly they sank. Thankfully, in each case, everyone was rescued safely. Fans of orcas, or those who have a passing interest, have probably heard or read that orcas have never killed a person in the wild. And as far as records go, that seems to be the case. And considering how large, powerful, intelligent, organized, and cosmopolitan they are, I feel like if they wanted to kill a human, they would have. I am talking about in the wild, though. In captivity, it's a different story. But all that to say that even though the Gladys orcas attacked the boats, I don't think they would attack the humans if they ended up in the water with them. Of course, there is the danger of drowning and exposure, etc. And I don't think anyone wants to lose their boat. But then the question is, why is this happening? Why are the orcas doing this? Well, there are three different theories. So first, perhaps the earliest theory is that it was sort of an act of revenge by Gladys Blanca or White Gladys. Revenge for what? Well, a lot of boats travel in the Iberian Peninsula, and if you recall, some of the orca there were taking bluefin tuna from fishing vessels. There was a theory that maybe White Gladys was hit by a vessel, or possibly caught in some kind of a net. If you recall, the marine biologist Monica Gonzalez said that she preferred to stop the boats rather than keeping her baby safe. So it would seem like Gladys Blanca, or White Gladys, was really determined to go after the boats and it might suggest that something bad happened to her for her to be willing to go on the attack even when she was protecting her child. There are other theories though. There are some, such as Dr. Deborah Giles, who prefers to just go by Giles, an orca researcher who works at the nonprofit Wild Orca. Giles suggested that the behavior might be more of a fad, more of a playful behavior started by a few orcas and then copied by others that think it is simply a form of play. When speaking about the orcas, she stated that they, quote, are incredibly curious and playful animals. And so this might be more of a play thing as opposed to an aggressive thing. A point often brought up in regard to copycat behavior and trends in orcas is the salmon hat trend that started with one K-pod female back in 1987 in the Northeast Pacific. Basically, it seemed like one female decided to wear a dead salmon on her head, almost like a hat, and other orcas copied her. Within just a few weeks, three separate pods seem to have different orcas doing the same, though it seems this trend didn't last more than a year. But we also have seen other trends where juvenile orcas start to play and interact with different fishing equipment. It also does track with juveniles trying something out and being more curious slash playful. As with the Gladys orca, often the adult Gladys will observe rather than get involved. For example, in a separate pod from the Gladys Blanca pod, the mother, 
Gladys Herbiel was observed nearby, but it was the three juvenile Gladyses that did the attacking. Perhaps it's a combination of the two theories. Maybe Gladys Blanca really did have a traumatic experience and that's why she was inclined to go after the boats. But then other younger orcas thought it was something like a game and decided to copy her. However, there is a third and perhaps the most recent theory. So a paper came out in 2024 titled Killer Whales Habitat Suitability in the Iberian Peninsula, Implications for Conservation. The paper talked about multiple different topics related to the orcas, such as seasonal migration, how close they go to shore, the depths to which they dive, and their diet, which, as stated before, is linked to tuna migration. And the tuna may offer a bit of an insight as to why the boat attacks happen. Atlantic bluefin tuna can get rather large. According to the IGFA, the record of the largest ever caught was back in 1979, and it weighed 679 kilos, almost 1,500 pounds, and was about 3.84 meters long, or 12.6 feet. This was off the coast of Nova Scotia, though, which is apparently known for exceptionally large tuna. Regardless, they are pretty big fish, and if you recall from earlier, it seemed orca who took them from the fishing lines were more successful than ones who actively hunted them, at least more successful at getting bigger ones. Considering there may be some element of difficulty in hunting these fish, there is a theory that perhaps targeting these sailboats and going after the rudder could be practice for the younger orcas as they learn to catch tuna. The sailing boats move swiftly through the water without making much noise, and they are on the surface, of course. And tuna usually swim without making too much noise, and they swim close to the surface, or at least they often do. The lead author of the study, Bruno Diaz Lopez, even stated, This is like a training toy. Hard to pin down an exact reason for the incidents over the past four years, although I could see a scenario where each theory has some truth to it. Perhaps Gladys Blanca did have a traumatic incident that caused her to want to target boats, and then other, sometimes younger orcas copied her. And then maybe these orcas realized they had more success hunting tuna if they practiced on sailboats. Or maybe there are other reasons we haven't even thought of yet. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. I will say there are many specialists who have given their own two cents, and they know many, many, many more times more information on orcas than I ever will. So I would take any of their suggestions very seriously. In the meantime, it doesn't seem the orcas are going to stop anytime soon. It has been about four years now, but people are adapting. Some have begun radioing each other and using apps to identify new sightings and locations of the orcas. The Spanish government have already put a satellite tag onto one of the offending orcas, and they are, or they were, planning on doing more. In 2023, the Portuguese government had suggested using devices to deter the orcas from getting too close, but I don't know if that went ahead. It seems like there might be some environmental concerns on how that could affect other marine life. A workshop sponsored by both governments suggested the best course of action was to avoid them and stay away if they are nearby. I do hope the attacks will fade out over time, not only for the people involved, but also for this small population of endangered orcas. When a group of animals are endangered, Having interactions with humans, especially interactions that the humans don't like, seems like a recipe for a disaster, but hopefully not. Anyway, thank you so much to my patrons and my members, and thank you for watching.